welcome to a short training video on how to build an event page on Action Network. So when, once you've logged into Action Network, your page is going to look pretty similar to mine. And to get started on building an event page, just go to the right side of the screen under Create a Sponsored Action and select Event. So to get started, you're going to need a title for your event. In this case, we're going to make one for foam banking. I also often like to include the date of the event. This is just because it's, it's easier on our end for, for sharing purposes, but it's optional. Now, if your event is in person, you're going to want to make sure you have the name of the location and the address. This is because once you publish your event page, the event page will show a little map on the screen with a pin for the location of the event. If your event is virtual, all you have to do is select this button at the top that reads this event is virtual. You're going to need to enter your date and the time. If you have an end time to your event, just be sure to select this event has an end time so that you can enter that information. The next thing you're going to want to do is double check that your time zone is correct. Usually it will automatically show Eastern Daylight Time and I live on the East Coast and have Eastern Standard Time. So just be sure that the time zone is accurate for where you are and when the event is actually taking place. When you have a virtual event, a great thing to do is to include the link to that event here. This is because once somebody signs up, they'll be able to access that URL and they'll be able to share it onto any of their digital calendars that they have. This just makes it easier for them to access the link when the event is um, taking place. Now, I know it says that host contact information is optional, but it should never be optional. Always include your email or your phone number for your event. You want people to be able to contact you for any information that they may have um, or for questions that they have. Now that you've entered all the basic information for your event, you're going to want to include a little event description. This is a great place to not only talk about what your event is about, but also to mention any guest speakers you have, to include any additional links or images for this event. In this case, for the sake of time, I'm just going to make this a one sentence description, but I do recommend adding a little bit more. To let's make this make calls to black voters. I often will say, not only to add a description, but also restate the date and the time here too. Um, if you want to make your text bigger, go to format and you're going to be able to select from a variety of headings here um, to make your font bigger and bolder. Um, you can include lists, images that you're able to change the size of, videos, tables, links. Um, I highly recommend just playing around with event descriptions so you're able to build something that looks right to you and works right for you. Beyond having an event description, I highly, highly recommend including a banner image. A banner image is great because when you share your links on social media, not only will the link be shared, but it will automatically also show the image um, fr from the banner image on your social media post. This just makes it a bit more eye-catching and people are more likely to engage with what you're sharing if it's not just a URL. I do recommend just keeping an eye on the, the size recommendations because sometimes it can otherwise get a little blurry or take up too much of the screen. I built a really random banner image for this that I'm gonna put in here. If you have an image attribution, be sure to include that and your alt text. Once that's done, the last thing you want to do for the event description portion of this is to select if your event is accessible or not. 
and in which ways that it is accessible. After you've done this, you are done with the event description. The last thing you're going to want to do, though, is just to double check that the information that you're getting from individuals who are RCP is right for you. On Action Network, it will always, always ask and require an email and a zip code, and it usually asks for the first name and the last name. But let's say you want people to ask questions about the event ahead of time. All you have to do is edit this form and you'll get to um, this page. So in this white box, that's all the information that is already included in the sign up form. And then everything under question library or blank questions, you'll be able to drag into this form in order to customize it. The question library is great if you have questions that you've already created or if you just want, for example, the street address, their mobile number, that kind of information. As you can see, we have a lot of questions in the question library. Yours might not look like look like that, but if you don't have something in the question library yet, you can just customize your form by take going to blank questions and dragging things over into your form. If you want someone to select check boxes, this allows them to select multiple options. Um, there's a lot that you can do with this. There's a drop down menu. Again, this is something I just recommend you play around with. But in order to customize um, this question, you're always going to have to choose the name. This is more for, for the back end questions. Um, you want to have a, a label here. Um, questions ask here and you don't really have to add any information for the placeholder but you can if this is something you want to be required question just select that button otherwise you're good to go and you can can save now that I have this extra form here um, extra question in my form I'm all good I don't need any more information from folks for this event. So I'm just going to save my form and I'm ready to save and go to the next step. Just two more things I will note though. If you want to allow attendees to bring guests, guests, be sure to just select this button. If you want to change um, the text that it reads for the RSC P button, you can do that as well just by clicking on it. Um, other than that, you are ready to save and go to the next step. So this is just what your page is going to look like after somebody RSVPs. Always be sure to thank them for signing up. And here you can include any additional information that you may want, might want somebody to know but not have access to before they RSVP. I will note that you're able to Customize follow-up emails as well, so there's no need to add a lot of information to this if you do not want to. After you've done that, you can also change things for your support and help us make your goals. So you can customize this if you would like to as well, and you can customize the sharing options, which I will show you how to do that elsewhere. Otherwise, you're ready to go. You can either save the draft for your event, or if you're ready to publish it, save and publish. Yay, you have published your first event on Action Network. So after you've done that, this is what the back end will look like for managing your event. Um, there are a few important sections here that I am going to go over. The first things to pay attention to is just if you want to see what your event page looks like, click on View Event, and it will, it will show you what everybody else sees when you share it. Again, here you've got the banner image, you've got the description. Um, you can see that the questions are on the form. It will auto populate individuals information if they've ever signed up for an event on your action network before. If not, this is what the form will look like. And then they can RSVP. Um, but let's say you look at this and you've got some other things you want to change. That's all right. All you have to do is go back to managing your page 
and select edit event. Now, one thing you should always, always do is have tags. Tags will allow you when you're sending emails or let's say you need to just find information on individuals who only came to your phone bank on August 28th, but not to any of the others, or you wanna know who's interested in phone banking in versus someone who might've signed up for a postcarding event, you're able to find that information through tags. So always be sure to add relevant tags. In this case, we're gonna make this a phone bank volunteer tag. If you see one that you don't, you see that there isn't a tag yet for what you need, that's all right. You can just build one here on the right side by clicking the green plus sign. Once you have your tag, just make sure you save and you'll be, be able to see them here. Other things to pay attention to is if you are using emails on Action Network, something great that you can do is automatically have an email target just those who are coming to your event. And if you wanna do that, you just have to select create email and it'll allow you to make an email the way you always do an Action Network, but it's already tagged only those that are attending your event. A few last things they should always um, do before sharing your event is to go to discussion and to disable your discussion board. The discussion board allows anybody and everybody who RSVPs for your event to make comments. It can be to ask questions. It can be just to say, I'm excited. Um, and while that seems nice, the problem with that is if someone texts I'm excited to the discussion board, then every other person who has signed up for the event gets an email alert about that. We don't really want to upset people who are signing up for something, so just be sure to disable this because I know I hate having my inbox spammed and I don't think anybody else wants that. The last two things you want to do before you share your event is you want to go to responses. and there are a few things you can do under responses. One thing you can do is after you've created your event page, when we were looking at the thank you page, let's say you actually, instead of that thank you page, you want it to automatically go um, to your website or you want it to redirect to a donate page. This is where you would include that redirect link for your event so that after somebody RSVPs, it automatically redirects them to the page that you're interested in and then looking at. Other things that you're able to do, um, Action Network will always send an automatic response email once you've signed up for an event and 24 hours before the event takes place. What I do recommend doing is customizing a few things here. The first thing, definitely change the reply to email to, act, to be your email address so that if somebody responds, they're actually able to reach out to somebody. Other things they were able to do, um, let's say you wanna include the, the Zoom link directly in the email, you can do that. Um, whatever you'd like, you can add this information. Same goes for the event 24 hours before, just be sure to change the reply to email. I also recommend changing your subject to be a little bit um, more specific, so your phone bank, and um, changing from your host your name, and what have you. Um, after you've done this, something that I love doing is just sending myself a test email just so I can see what the emails actually look like when folks receive them. After you've done that and you think, okay, this looks great, I'm good to go with this. Just make sure, again, you select save responses so that, that all of that information is saved. After you've done this, the last thing you want to check before you start sharing this uh, event page out with um, everybody is to go to sharing and tracking and to customize your sharing options for Facebook, Twitter, and an email. Action Network, after somebody signs up, they're going to be able to share this event on their Facebook pages, their Twitter pages, and 
with their emails and you just want to make sure that the text is what you want people to share and is pretty short. Oftentimes, if you have a bit of a lengthier event page description, Action Network will just automatically cut and paste all of that information into one big paragraph. And you don't really want to be sharing that on Facebook or for others to be sharing that on Facebook. So just make sure you go through, you cut your information and you, you sort it out a little bit with more spacing so it's easier for people to read. If you don't have a banner image or you want there to be a different image that goes out on Facebook, you're able to do that. Um, on Twitter, make sure if you have a Twitter page to add that in here so that anytime somebody shares this on their Twitter page, you'll be tagged in it and you'll get to know who's interacting with, with your events. Um, and just like with the previous two sections on your emails, be sure to, to customize it, to change the information. The only thing you always want to include is the RSVP link, of course. After you've done all of this, just select Save Options. And you are done. You are ready to go and can share your event page with the world. Um, that is the basics of how to make an event page. Um, if you want to, just two last things, add sponsors to your event, you can do that here. This is just, let's say you have a smaller Center for Common Ground Action Network page, but you want the bigger Center for Common Ground page to sponsor it as well. You can add us here as a sponsor or anybody else that you know that uses Action Network who wants to sponsor your event. If you want to see who's rscp so far, you can do that under RSCPs. Here, you'll also be able to see any questions that they submit if you customize your form. Other than that, you are pretty much ready to go. You can share your, your event page and that's it. Now, let's say it's been a few days or you just wanna see how many people have signed up for your event. You can do that by going to back to your main page on Action Network and then selecting the Actions tab. Apologies, my internet's slow. And then on the Actions tab, you will be able to see your event here. If you select the title itself, it will automatically open up the event page. But if you would like to edit that event page, just select Manage and you will be able to um, edit and do everything else that you need to just like we did before. Other than that, that is really all you need to know to build an event page on Action Network. If you ever have any questions about this, definitely reach out to me, Josie, at, uh, through my email, um, and I can walk you through this in person uh, whenever you need to. Other than that, this concludes our training on how to build an event page on Action Network. Thanks.